Good to have today um, Joanne Kwa, who's joining us from Malaysia. Hi, Joanne. How are you? Hi, Ines. Thank you for inviting me. Happy Friday, everybody. Yes, happy Friday. Um, so today we're going to be discussing how to prepare for family business succession. So before we jump into the subject, Joanne, would you like to share with us a bit more about what you do? And I know you're a serial business female entrepreneur and would love to know about a bit more about all the business you're running. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm currently actually the CEO, uh, the group CEO uh, at KSK Group. Uh, so KSK Group, we are a conglomerate. Actually, we run uh, two main core businesses. Uh, one is actually non-life insurance uh, playing in now Thailand and um, Indonesia. Uh, we used to also be the largest uh, ins motor insurer uh, in Malaysia uh, under the brand of Kurnia uh, up till 2010. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, about seven years ago, we branched out into also property development as our second core business uh, under the brand of KSK Land. So today I'm also the MD of KSK Land. Uh, more recently than not, actually, we started our ventures portfolio under uh, tech ventures portfolio under KSK Ventures. Um, and, and today, uh, out of which two of our uh, ventures uh, I co-founded. So one is actually Karmana, um, and it's a C2C, sort of uh, the largest C2C uh, one-stop services used car marketplace uh, in Thailand. Um, and also, uh, the second one I, I co-founded is actually Sunday. Uh, it's an insure tech, full stack insure tech uh, with license um, out of Thailand as well. Uh, and we, we recently, last year, just um, expanded into Indonesia as well. Um, and out of uh, last year, we launched, like what I told you, Ines, we launched a, uh, an F&B uh, retail accelerator called Platter Accelerator um, in support of uh, a lot of the F&B players who are SMEs um, in, in Malaysia as well. Yeah, That's really great. I mean, you're so busy. How do you manage this? Yeah, well, I think it's just with good time discipline, um, number one. And number two is really just with a bunch of really talented and passionate individuals. Uh, I always believe that we can't do everything ourselves um, and every sort of bright idea or good idea that we have or anything that we want to um, make true, I think we have to do it together with a good group of people. Uh, yeah, and, and, and they make it possible. Absolutely agree. <laughs> so let's dive into the subject of today. And of course, if anybody has a question for Joanne, don't hesitate to raise your hand or type your question in the chat and I'll be happy to ask it for you. Um, so Joanne, please tell us when was the first time you were involved in your family business and what was the driving force behind your, the succession? Was it an expectation from your family or maybe an ambition of yours? Yeah, so uh, I joined KSK Group about 11 years ago and counting. Um, and um, there was really never any sort of expectation that was uh, set in stone. Um, you know, we, we, it was really, uh, um, I think uh, at that time, my previous life, I was working in uh, Deutsche Bank in London. Um, I was actually doing securitization. Um, and, and, you know, prior to that, I had a short stint in actually Munich reinsurance as well in Munich. So I think, um, and I, I guess uh, where I came from, you know, our group, we are actually even, well, the group is actually younger than I am. We are actually close to about 30 years old. Um, and, I, and I'm second generation family business. So my, my father and uh, today our, our chairman of the group, uh, he founded the business. And really uh i grew up actually watching him go from from really nothing to an insurance agent to having uh this big dream of owning actually an insurance company and back then when i was young you know i kind of remember everyone saying this is crazy and you know even he told me himself people said that he had this crazy wild dream that would never be realized and he made it happen and, and that has always been an inspiration from me and looking back i guess that is the part of the reason why i'm passionate about you know uh venture building as well uh, because you know when you have someone like that inspiring you every day um you see what can 
sort of possibly really happen. Uh, but we never really had this conversation about all these years about, you know, sort of me coming back. Uh, but if I recall, maybe about 11 years ago, um, coming out from, uh, I was at the center of the Lehman Brothers crisis, you know, after working for a couple of years in Deutsche and, uh, and then coming out of that, um, you know, I thought maybe it's time for a change. Uh, and I decided to actually maybe go on the other side of the equation for, for securitization. Uh, and one day having a conversation with my father and he said, you know, why are you going back into, into, into working for other people? Would you like to consider coming back and working for me? And in quite, in all honesty, that was a very, um, tough, uh, decision for me to make because uh, it was one where, you know, it's a little bit like a black hole. You don't know what to expect, uh, what the dynamics would be, you know, what would shift. Um, and, and, you know, it's really coming back to a really big, uh, big business already. So, you know, I started to think what would be my contribution, you know, uh, how can I actually contribute to this big machine that is already there, you know, uh, and, and, and I think that's where, uh, there was a thing that he said that actually really triggered me and, you know, gave me that sort of courage to just say, let's just try this approach. And what he said to me was, you know, um, if I wanted you to come home and uh, work for with me uh, and just say yes to me, uh, then, then that's, I have plenty of people to do that for me. Uh, but, you know, I come from a place of experience uh, and you come from a place where, you know, you can contribute fresh perspectives because you are the customer of the future. Um, so how about we try this approach? Um, and I think in hindsight, that actually, um, that, that really pushed me along because, uh, and that was the, the one line that actually gave me a lot of courage because it meant that, uh, you know, we looked at each other like partners. And that was a conversation that I've never had um, in my many years uh, with my father before. Uh, it was a very different kind of conversation. And I thought, okay, why not we try that approach? Yeah, that's wonderful that actually, yeah, you, you actually value your past experience. And touching a bit on your past experience, actually, um, so what, what were the key lessons you actually um, learned that were helpful for, for the succession? Yeah, I think, um, I think uh, being away, uh, you know, from, from, from home as well, uh, being in London and actually sort of working um, in, in, in the world of banking, uh, it really teaches you how to, you know, you're starting from the bottom. It gives you a perspective of how it feels like, number one, to be frank, to be working for people and working as a professional in the banking world is not an easy place to be, uh, especially, you know, when you go sort of almost like 15, 16 years back. Um, and then I think really, uh, you know, when you start at the bottom, uh, there are a lot of things that you have to manage. And a lot of times it's about getting that exposure to managing different types of people who come from different walks of life, mm -hmm. uh, you know, managing upwards and, and sort of, you know, regulating how you feel as well emotionally and how fast you actually uh, want to pick things up. Um, and then, you know, I think maybe what in, back in hindsight, one of the most valuable experiences is really the financial crisis that actually happened because when I started in banking, it was really, you know, a time of, it was the peak, you know, it was so easy to, it was competitive, but it was so easy to, to, to be okay with everything. Um, but really, you know, you wake up the next morning and, and, and that financial crisis hits and insecuritization, that's really at the center of everything. That's where, you know, I think it's one of the most valuable lessons that I could learn because it shows you that in a crisis, anything and everything can go wrong. Um, you see cracks that, you know, you probably we all knew that were there, but, you know, we never really did anything about it. So, you know, you learn a lot in a, in a downturn or you learn a lot in a crisis and that really forms the way, you know, you, you, you position yourself all the time. You know, when today uh, we're running family business, a lot of times it's about the entrepreneurship, um, the grit that we have, you know, uh, making decisions and, and looking at calculated risks and, and everybody looking at you and saying, okay, how do you make these decisions? 
Um, so being in that environment actually helps to kind of, you know, um, allow me to have a lot more of that confidence, you know, that calculated risk that I take on, a, on almost like a daily basis today, uh, you know, how, how to do that. Um, and, and, and with that, you know, when you, and I think a lot of uh, CEOs know, know this as well, when you make those quick decisions um, and cal take calculated risks, uh, people respect you for, for the chair. You know, that's one of the most important things you have to do. Um, so, so, so I think those, probably those two are, are really one of the, the, the biggest takeaways for me uh, going into the family business. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's, there's always a, a learning curve, but it's fantastic that it serves you so much for the succession. And, and I'm guessing it must not have been easy taking that challenge. Like you say, it was already a really big business. So, um, maybe could you share with us what were the challenges that you encountered <laughs> during, um, basically this succession? Yeah, I think um, the first one is really, you know, when, when I came into the business, um, it was already, it was Krenia uh, Insurance, it, you know, it was the biggest uh, insur motor insurer in Malaysia. We had presence in even Thailand and Indonesia. We, we were a listed company at that time as well. Um, everybody, you know, going into the business, there were a lot of people that I was very familiar with because uh, I grew up with them as well. Uh, but when I walked into the business, uh, it was a very different position. Um, so what I realized very quickly is that, you know, how do I contribute? Um, how do I, uh, what value would I add? You know, uh, how would I then, uh, if, if there was an idea that, that I had, how would I actually uh, get people to sort of give, you know, pay attention or uh, get their buy-in? And I think that comes from um, having to earn the mutual respect. So it came with a lot of hard work because when I first started, it was almost like um, when people have gone through 20 years of experience, uh, you know, I would go in and say, yeah, I, I don't deny 20 years worth of experience. I want to work with you because you have 20 years work, work experience and, and I have none. Uh, but what I bring to the table is, you know, the fresh perspective, but also the, a lot of hard work, a lot of preparation, you know, in every meeting that I would go into, I would prepare like crazy in detail because, um, you know, that's, that's, that's what I needed to do. And I think that people saw that and understood that how this, this, this girl, she knows a lot of, a lot of things that we're already doing. So then, you know, you start contributing in conversations. Um, uh, I, I didn't go into the business thinking that, okay, uh, I'm coming in as second generation and then everything is just, uh, a seat uh, that I chair that, that I've been put in that position. Uh, at that time, I was group COO. So that meant that, you know, um, I had to earn the respect of the chair. Mm. Uh, so, so hard work um, and a lot of humility, um, active listening, you know, listening to what everybody has to say, listening to the experiences that they have. Um, and, and really, you know, once that happens, you know, um, a lot of people actually start to open up to you. And over time, you know, all the experiences that I have as well, um, I share. Uh, so, so that is one. And, and I think the second biggest challenge was really at the beginning. Now, after 11 years, it's a lot easier. But really, you know, what's the fine line between family versus being in business? So when you're at home, uh, where father and daughter, for example, but when you go into the business, uh, it's almost like, you know, it's, I always joke every day, it's almost like being bipolar. So at home, you're father and daughter, and then you go into the business and you're chairman and CEO. So, um, you know, how do you actually do that split? Um, it's not an easy thing to do. It takes a lot of communication, a lot of uh, management of uh, expectations, uh, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really, I think, more often than not, um, it's about the mutual respect for, for each other, really, uh, that you have as chairman and CEO versus uh, what you already, what we already have as father and daughter. That's very different. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. I mean, this is amazing, or actually, that your father, like you said earlier, 
um, really saw you as a partner from the very beginning, which is, yeah, I think it's definitely a, the best way to do this. Um, but um, I'm also curious, like, I guess a lot of people are saying that one of the biggest struggling points for family business is um, that there's very uncertain boundaries and different rules. So just curious, how do you, do you have a way to, to get balance between them, really? Yeah, I mean, um, like I um, touched on a little bit earlier, it's really about the, the mutual respect that you have for each other's role, uh, I think. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, uh, in, in successful family businesses, uh, we, we, you know, people are very quick to judge to think that if you are in a family business and you own a family business, you need to be in the business uh, running everything. But the truth is, there is a, a line where you are the owner or you are actually the, the person operating or running the business. And the, and for, for us, at least in, my, in, in, in our family business, um, if we are family, but we are running the business like me, I'm the CEO today, um, we've got to understand that we have an obligation to be professional when we run in, in the business as a CEO. Um, and that is actually fundamental uh, because... Um, the flip side of that is that if you are just a CEO, um, professional CEO with no stake in a family business, you know, you would think of your business plans in maybe in five years framework, time frame. But when you are an owner in a family business, in a professional family business, you would think of your business and the decisions you make uh, 10 years on, 20 years on. Um, and that's really the, the, the big plus in being in a successful family business. Um, and, and, and when, when we join the family business, it's about having that clear communications and the discipline of having that clear communications to say, to set those expectations right about what we expect from each other when we are actually operating in the business versus owning the business. Because in a lot of family businesses, you could actually own the business and don't run it. You could always get a professional person to run it. Um, so having that clear communications and understanding, you know, what are the expectations? Um, in our family business, for example, uh, I have my siblings who work in the business today with me. Um, and, you know, things like little things like uh, it's, you know, performance appraisal time, giving feedback. Uh, and you would think that, you know, how do you give feedback to family, you know? And, and you know, negative ones, right? Yeah, you know, things that, okay, the areas of improvement, you know, do you do it? You know, so we do. Uh, but we, so we have that expectation set between us and says, yes, we, we have to do that. Uh, but where do we do it? We, you know, so we make a promise to each other and say, look, we will do feedbacks, but we'll do it in the office because that's our space where we, we are. Uh, I am the CEO and I'm not talking to you as a sister. I'm talking yeah. to you as a CEO. Drawing even the physical boundaries, right? <laughs> right. Yes. Drawing even that physical boundary. You know, it helps because it helps you shift your mind yeah. frame. And by the time you go home, nothing really matters anymore. You know, you have family dinners and let's not talk about it because this is family. And I yeah. think it's really because it's a very tricky place to be. Uh, when you're in a family business, there are always emotions involved and we're only human. You can't take that emotion seriously. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is great if you actually manage to yeah, keep business out of the dinner table when you're all at home, right? I mean, it's, it's really it's really important, I agree. Um, and so I'm guessing it must be also a lot of positive and unforgettable experiences that you encountered with your family members in the workplace. Would you like to share some with us, maybe? Um, yeah, I think... Um... In general, I've had a lot of uh, positive moments, actually. I think we all have positives and up, our ups and downs, really. A lot of times, um, we would uh, we have a lot of debates as well, I would be honest, right? Um, uh, and a lot of times, um, no matter how, how much uh, and how many debates we have, um, it's important to understand that, you know, it's important at least for us to understand that, okay, we are all heading towards the di same direction and we just want that same clear objective. So whenever we have these debates, you know, we go into it and then we say, okay, done. Uh, we're going into this clear objective. Um, but on the flip side of that, you know, with all the positive moments, um, most of the time it happens when we have a lot of challenges. Uh, when we have the challenges, you know, with with family, you kind of know that you have that innate trust already that you have for each other. Mm -hmm. Because 
bond that the family bond that we have. Um, so a lot of my experiences, uh, my special moments are moments when you know we've we've gone through um, huge challenges or huge changes that that we wanted to do, um, and knowing that you know there are people who have your back, um, especially family, uh, gives the courage to to make that change, um, and and that is actually a very big one. Uh, so for example, when you know, we uh, made a huge decision to actually sell our Malaysian insurance business um, in 2010 um, and make the pivot uh, to, to enter property development as our second core business. That was, you know, one of the pivotal moments today in our, in our group history. And, and that decision was not an easy decision to make. Um, it was obviously very emotional because it's it's one that you know with you know, at least uh, for my father he's built that business from ground up, um, and and it's it's an industry and it's a business that we're passionate about. So the moment it took us two years to do the sale, and the moment we finished the sale, it came with a lot of emotional ups and downs as well. Uh, but when we did the sale, it was also one of the largest uh, sale uh, insurance uh, deals uh, in the market at that time, and. Um, and I, I clearly remember the moment that we finished the sale. It was a, it was a, it was a huge celebration. And when I looked at uh, and my father, you know, it felt like a little bit like Batman and Robin. You know, it's like oh, <laughs> got it handled together. Um, and those are the moments that 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 you know, in the in a in our dynamics would shift because, uh. You know, that pivotal moment was the moment that, you know, um, he also said to me, you know, now you become the group CEO. So, you know, you, you we sort of said, okay, in our working relationship, that's the kind of level of honesty that, you know, we had to have this event happen for us to to bridge that huge trust uh, working with each other um, and that, that, that level of respect that we have for each other in the work that we do. Uh, yeah, and I think that 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 has to continue, and, and that's always very important. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I mean, it's it's most I can't even imagine it. It must be really rewarding to see uh, to 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 have that exchange with your father as well, right? So, um, but I'm guessing also it's important we we touch on maybe something that uh, our audience can can relay and probably um, use uh, in their in their day to day. So how do you deal actually with disagreements uh, in the workplace? So for you, particularly with family members, which is even, uh, even a bit more tricky, you know, in a way. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, in as disagreements happen all the time, um, but it's a state of mind, whether you, you, a lot of times disagreements at work, um, family or not actually if you if you take it personally it will be personal um because uh but if you take it um um positively and say hey this is just a, a work disagreement that that you know we have very varying opinions um that's where the structure happens you know to kind of put people together and say okay uh, one person listens and one person actually responds um and that you have to actually give people time uh, to you know, to you know, like, for example, in our culture uh, in KSK, we um, actively encourage people to always um, give uh, opinions because we feel that that's actually very important. Um, it's never a one-way traffic, um, and they should be safe enough, uh, feel safe enough to actually give their opinions. And if it's one that you know um, the team disagrees to, then we just have to to say, you know, we disagree with this opinion and why. And, and be okay that after that, you know, once you, um, you end up with many disagreements or many opinions and you come up with making sure that people have the same objective and that objective is met, you know, then you can actually go out and, and have a beer and, and that's okay. Um, with family, um, of course, with family, that's even harder because it comes with a lot more emotions. And a lot of times when, when you are paid to channel more emotions, whereas with with people who you're more unfamiliar with, you sort of pull back a little bit and that helps, right? Because, so how do you do that? So a lot of times it's really the same formula, right? It's really saying um, communication is really, really key. Um, setting that expectation is actually really, really key. And sometimes just 
uh, walking away from, from that disagreement for a little bit of time uh, and come back to it at a later stage works. Uh, um, and that's something that we've learned uh, really over the years. It's not something that uh, you get it right the first time round because it's about, again, it's back to the trust that you have in each other. Um, um, you know, um, one is listening to your opinion and saying, okay, uh, do we agree? The, the thing about family, the pro of it is that with family, there's a lot of give and take. There should be a lot of give and take. It's something that we should we should always learn. Um, when you give something, uh, other people will give it back to you. Um, that's also a principle that 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 we believe. Um, and so, so I think if you have that kind of state of mind, um, it makes things a lot easier. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely agree. Really good uh, tips. <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. So if, um, if anyone in the audience wants to ask a question, don't hesitate to raise your hand. There's a raise your hand button. Um, and um, of course, I still have more questions for you, Joanne, anyway. But uh, don't hesitate. Uh, if you have questions for Joanne, I'll be happy to have you on stage to answer them. Um, so I think we've learned so much already from, you know, the positive thing that happened uh, during basically your time working with your father and with your family so close. But um, I think what, what you touched on the, uh, this topic a little bit earlier, but I would like to, to dive in a bit more is there's situation usually where people dot your qualification, right? And your capabilities. And I think it would be really interesting to, to, to know how do you cope with that? Like what's your secret to, have your self-confidence really high, you know, and maybe when you're jumping in something that is completely new actually to you, like a bit what happened at the beginning of this. Um, I never really think about it when I walk into a room, uh, even though I know a lot of times uh, in my past, uh, when I first started out, I was uh, much younger than I was today, obviously. So, you know, when you walk into a room and you think that, oh, you're a young um uh, COO or CEO, uh, would people be listening to you? Uh, but I don't let it get to me, actually. I don't really um, dive into that a lot. To me, it's really about uh, a lot of preparation, uh, not taking things for granted uh, and being humble about it. Uh, I walk in uh, fully prepared for every single meeting, uh, every single proposal, every single pitch that I have, uh, whether it's internally or externally. Um, and the moment I uh, start to present or I start to make a conversation, um, uh, then people tend to understand, ah, okay, they, this, this person knows something. Uh, she understands what, and she knows what she's talking about. Um, and I think over time, that's the kind of respect that I, I got uh, for myself, um, because even today as a CEO, um, um, I'm still a very young CEO uh, and learning every day. Um, and that's something that I always tell myself, uh, and that keeps me humble all the time. Uh, even when I'm creating new businesses, I'm always still telling everybody that, hey, you know, I'm learning together with you guys. It's not always that I'm right. Um, so let's do it together. Um, and I think that that's really important. And when people see that, that's the level of humility that I think in leadership, uh, a lot of us uh, should continue to have uh, because as leaders, we have to actually always walk the talk. So when, when, you know, when we make, like I said earlier as well, so when we do a lot of the work, when we do a lot of the planning, uh, when we, um, you know, I'm an avid planner. I plan like every single scenario that can come my way. And so um, any deal of business that, that we go into is all calculated, right? Uh, and, and that comes with a lot of thought process that goes into it. And not just from me alone, it's always with a bunch of people and, and listening to them and thinking through um, you know, what, what we truly want to do. Um, and I think that when, when we do that, then you know, people and being very hands-on uh, then actually people tend to look at you, tend to look at me a little bit differently. Um, and that, that, that is actually the kind of mutual respect that I, I always think it's important for us, for us to have. Yeah. I absolutely agree. This is the best way to earn respect. That's for sure as a leader. So we have a question from the audience. Um, <laughs> Maytan, I will ask the question for you to Joanne. Um, so Joanne, how did you get your father to trust and believe in you 
uh, and hand over the business to you? Do you feel pressure to meet his expectation? Um, you know, at the I go, I go back to to expectations and respect. Um, when I first joined the business, I think when we first joined businesses as a as a second generation or as a third generation, um, we have to understand that you know we have to earn the respect from them as well. Uh, a lot of uh, family businesses are built by the founders, and you know the family attached to it. And when we take over the chair or when we take over the position, um, that's symbolic of, you know, them giving us the trust to continue the legacy. You know, it's not about saying, hey, you're, you're CEO, so, you know, so just sit there and just be the CEO. It's about giving you, um, giving us the, the chair so that we can continue to run the business um, for generations and generations to come. And at, at least that is the way I think about the business. I don't think about the business just as a professional CEO. I think about the business as a professional CEO, but at the same time as an owner, I think about how can we make sure that our business is sustainable, that lasts generations and generations, even when I'm not here or even when my father's not here. Um, and so going into the business that's the kind of level of expectation that we have to constantly communicate with each other um, and that's what we did maybe i'm lucky enough to have that uh, maybe i'm lucky enough to have that opportunity and, and and it's never an easy discussion right because and it's not a discussion that you have at one time and you have that all settled um but you know um like you said ines you know for for me uh, i'm lucky enough to have uh, ourselves we, we think of our relationship as partners um, how can we put both strengths together on the table? So when I first started the, uh, in the business, you know, I started as a group CEO. And, and yes, uh, at that time, it was highly uh, uh, pressurizing because what do I do in this position? I have to contribute and I have to make sure that I, I walk the talk. And, and, and like I said, you know, it comes with a lot of late nights, hard work. Um, and, and, and those things pay off because you, you then gain those experiences really quickly and working with a whole bunch of people that have already have the experiences um, and just listening to them. Sometimes it's not about whether we agree with them or not. It's just about just listening to them because we have to respect the work that they have done you know, throughout the years. Um, uh, and that is always very, very important. Um, and saying, hey, I want to work with you because you have this level of experience that I will never have. But let's put two and two together because clearly um, the, we are, we're talking about the future as well. Um, you know, for in, in our business, as I said, my pivotal moment um, was was the level of trust that that, that I, I I suppose uh, you know, my my father and chairman gave me was when I you know you know when I was driving the the sale of Queenia Malaysia for him. It was a one point six billion dollar sale, uh, and we successfully did it. You know, and, and, and in hindsight, in hindsight, I think, you know, we, it was not like a robotic thought process that goes through, right? It was just, oh, okay, you can do this now and I trust you. Um, and then, you know, that's where, you know, he said, okay, then, you know, I think you should be the group CEO of, the, of our listed company. You know, and you go, and you go that way and that's where the, your voice gets heard a lot more. Um, so, so that at least is in the process. And I fully understand that, you know, I fully understand that you know, I can never have full reign of doing something. And why should I, if I don't uh, show people the track record that I can create? Um, and it's not just, uh, you know, always to the chairman, you know. I always say as a CEO, we're working for our people. It's never always the fact that, you know, our people are working for us. We are always working for the people. Um, and, you know, it's the same sort of values and principles that we deploy is that we have to understand, you know, um, how they feel. Uh, what is their passion? What are they comfortable in doing? You know, and if we have a vision that we want to go in a certain direction, um, we would actually have to 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 get their buy in as well, uh, get their level that they trust us enough to say yes, we are going into this direction. You're not going to do it alone, and we are going to all do it together. Um, so it works both ways. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Well, I can tell, Jen, you're such an empathetic. Um, leader and I can imagine why your team follows you it's um, it's it's definitely the way to lead nowadays we have another questions from Jacqueline 
Uh, hi, Jacqueline. Uh, would you like to come on stage, actually, ask the question? Because I think you want to say thank you, Job. But if you do, you can raise your hand, like press the raise button, um, raise hand button. Um, but Jacqueline would like to know, um, on the way when you are becoming stronger and more powerful to the position, uh, who are you now? I guess you ask the question again. Yeah, <laughs> even myself <laughs> reading it, I'm like, mm. <laughs> no. So I guess um, Jacqueline wants to to ask on the way um, when you are becoming stronger and more powerful to the position. Mm -hmm. uh, who are you now? So probably where where do you stand now? Do you? I guess you you were saying earlier you still feel that you're learning, right? Um, mm -hmm. I guess this is what Jacqueline means. Sort of where where do where you feel now in your career? Um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, after eleven years uh, in the business and and venture building, um, definitely uh, I, as a CEO, I still feel that I'm I'm a, a CEO who is still learning the ropes and continue to learn the ropes, um, and uh, I think where I am now is really about. Um, making sure that that we have setting the platform and making sure that we have a platform where the business will continue to evolve uh all the time uh i think of uh because in my mind it's always about creating that continuing that legacy and making sure that our businesses really last generations and really affecting having because you know uh we have that opportunity to kind of affect a lot of people um, and not very many people get that opportunity to do so. Um, so how do we do that? Uh, you know, and in the business, um, it's really always, you know, things like little things like even today, getting people out of the comfort zone, do, doing different things and having that courage to do so and then seeing them grow very differently um, is something that actually drives me every day. Uh, um, I continue to like venture building. Uh, you know, I like uh, seeing different businesses grow. Uh, at the same time, uh, it's part and parcel of the, 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 the how the evolution of uh, the business platform uh, that, that uh, we're creating today. So for me, uh, that's, that's at, uh, where I'm at at the moment. Um, because there are so many things that are changing around the world today. Um, our customers are changing continuously um, so setting that framework and that business of you know how do we actually allow changes to happen uh, positively um, and getting our people to be ready for that as well yeah absolutely that's wonderful well thank you so much Ryan. we're we're open to a few more questions if you can if anyone wants like to jump in but i would i want to say really i felt very inspired by your sharing i think it's um a lot of good takeaways um, that that all our members can apply actually to their own business, um, mm -hmm. even if it's not about family succession. I think um, we, they can learn a lot from you uh, as a leader and the way you see your business and uh, its evolution. So mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you again. Uh, I hope we yeah. will see you again on our channel. Maybe we do something together <laughs> as well <laughs> in Malaysia. And um, and this um, yeah this this video will be recorded and, and more of our members will be able to join and um, to watch it. So, oh, we have one last question. <laughs> um, okay, because we have a bit of time, we can take it. So, uh, it's a question from Maria who's saying um, Joanne was always a different perspective in. Um, in a K, uh, KSK meeting room, other than our architecture, um, that was the center of this, the discussion. Do you think that being involved in different kind of businesses, such a, as a developer or insurance business, which is completely different business model, gives a better perspective in business than others, uh, the other way to deal with this? Oh, that's a really good, interesting point, right? Because you have so many hats. So mm -hmm. how do you actually... Um, this, does this give you actually uh, an advantage in a way in the meeting room? Yeah, I think it definitely does. Um, actually, I'm, 
I, I, I think it, I'm actually very privileged to, to be able to span across like so many different types of businesses from, you know, luxury real estate all the way to, um, insurance and micro insurance for, for, you know, um, to activate a lot of, uh, areas where people don't actually even get coverage, right? For things like when we talk about insurance in, in the ASEAN markets. Um, it gives me a huge perspective, definitely a value advantage because it gives me a huge perspective of, um, you know, how uh, customers are like, uh, what their minds are really all about, um, what they want. Because I'm a very big believer in, in every business that we built, um, our customers are everything. And so um, whenever we think of our businesses, we have to think about how the customers are evolving, uh, what is really important for them. And, and when we design something, we have to design something for them. Um, so when, when I think Maria, um, uh, you know, probably knows, knows, knows about um, how, how we, we started in property development, it was really a clean sheet of paper for me. And going in there, it was not about, for me, the way I thought about it was not even about building a, a, a development. When I started a development, it was not about the brick and mortar. It's really about, oh, what's our lifestyle concept? You know, who's our target audience? What, and putting myself in their shoes and saying, okay, then what would they like to have? Um, and I think at that time, a lot of people were really surprised because they were like, huh? I thought we were here to talk about the building design. And I was like, yeah, but... You know, it's important to understand what these guys want. You know, why are we building something that, that people don't want and, and you're building something that would last forever, actually, when you're building a building. Um, actually, the building lasts generations, uh, you know, because it has, it has a huge uh, long life. Uh, so it's a huge decision to make. Um, so so that's, that's definitely something that keeps me going and also the reason why I continue to venture build because I always... Uh, look at it as a customer ecosystem rather than uh, rather than just a, a certain set of business. Yeah. That's so true, and I, b I believe this applies to many different businesses, right? Actually, the way you design a building is exactly the same way you would design an online platform nowadays, right? You have to think of the UX, UI, and um, correct. It's it's with the customers at heart. So wonderful. Right. Well, thanks so much, everyone. <laughs> Thanks so much for uh, your questions, and it's really exciting to to see you know um, more and more uh, of you have questions. So, Joanne, please come back again <laughs> on FW Thank channel. You. Uh, it was really great um, to have you with us today, and um, thanks so much for sharing. And we'll learn a lot uh, thanks to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ines. <laughs> Bye. Bye.